So another year, another winter. If you live in a place that gets cold, like my home state of Colorado, and you have a greenhouse, and you probably always ask yourself, what's the purpose of this greenhouse? Is it just a glorified cold box? So in other words, is it just a device that's trying to extend the growing season by a month on either side of the winter? Or are you trying to push it further? Are you trying to use it to grow uh, crops year round or try to grow warm weather crops? Um, if you want to push the limits of your greenhouse, then you immediately face the challenge of how to heat it. I have some small electric space heaters that draw 1500 watts, and you can use these to keep a greenhouse above freezing. However, the cost to run it is staggering. If you run it for six hours a day for a whole month, uh, it's going to draw a total of 270 kilowatt hours. So my residential electricity rates are about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. It would cost me about $40 a month to heat this greenhouse with a space heater. Uh, compost piles are amazing. So even a hobbyist like me can build a compost pile that achieves a temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius, even when the outside temperature is well below freezing. So the power required to heat uh, a pile of, of organic material to this temperature would be staggering, pr probably in the thousands of watts. So last winter, I built a prototype system to pull some of the heat from a compost pile and use it to heat my greenhouse. Check the, the description of this video to see uh, the video that I recorded last year. It worked amazingly well. I was able to keep cool weather crops growing well into January when I pulled them out because they had just gone dormant. We had temperatures that were as low as uh, minus 10 Fahrenheit or minus 23 degrees Celsius, and the compost heat system kept the plants alive. So this winter, I want to do better. I decided to re-engineer my compost-based greenhouse heating system. I have several goals. Number one, I want to uh, have a bigger, hotter compost pile. Number two, I want to improve the insulation of the system so the excess heat is going into my greenhouse. And number three, I want to push the limits on my greenhouse this year. So specifically, I've got 10 healthy tomato plants right now, and it's, it's middle of October. I want to keep these plants alive as long as I can, possibly producing into the wintertime. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built my new system. I'm not a carpenter, and I'm not a world expert in uh, heat capture from compost. So this is just one implementation appropriate for my greenhouse and my climate. So as they say, your mileage may vary. And of course, when I demonstrate the performance of this, of this system later in the winter in another video, I can minimize the length of that video by presenting some of the background material here. I have an existing greenhouse. As recommended by the compost experts, I've dug a three foot by three foot by three foot hole in the ground. For those of you living outside the US, that's one cubic meter. This is the compost chamber. My greenhouse is too small to hold the compost. Burying it will greatly help to insulate the pile during the cold winter months here in my home state of Colorado, but it'll definitely make it harder to turn the compost. I line the edges of the compost chamber with a layer of foam insulation to, to reduce the heat transfer into the dirt. I then cover the top of the compost chamber with an insulated lid, leaving space at the top for air to circulate over the top of the hot compost pile. The warm air from inside the compost chamber convex through a small connection between the greenhouse and the heat transfer chamber. I can use a small fan if necessary to increase the heat transfer. I'm quickly going, going to go through the steps involved in building my new compost-based he greenhouse heating system. I'm not a good carpenter, so please take these instructions as guidelines only. Each site and each situation is different. So here you can see the hole dug next to my greenhouse. I built a strong wood frame out of two by four inch lumber. This will enclose the compost chamber. I use bricks as footers to level the frame around the compost chamber. The bricks also keep the wood off the ground, which reduces the chance of rotting. I have a four foot long level. This is very useful when you're building things like this. Here's a closer view of the compost chamber frame. Next, I line the compost chamber with foam board. This is a very uh, flexible material, great for uh, kind of putting in spaces like this where you need something rigid. It's easiest to cut the foam board in place. I just use a serrated kitchen knife. Don't tell my wife. The cuts don't have to be perfect, as you can see here. Here's a zoomed out view of the compost chamber with the foam board in place. 
You don't want compost touching either the foam board or the wood because it's hot and it's very moist. So I lined the compost chamber with six mil plastic. This is the stuff that people use to cover greenhouses. When you staple the plastic to the wood frame, don't forget to use batten tape. It's just thin nylon webbing which keeps the plastic from tearing. Here's the compost chamber after I finished lining it with plastic sheeting. It doesn't have to be hermetically sealed. I'm just looking for a reasonably airtight and watertight barrier between the compost and the frame. The next step is to build an outer frame. Notice how I've got it resting on bricks at the base of the greenhouse. There are a few inches between the top of the compost chamber and the top of the outer frame. We need to leave space in order to circulate air across the top of the compost pile and warm it. Here you can see the small gap that connects the compost chamber to the greenhouse. It's not wide, but it's wide enough to move a decent amount of air in and out. Here's a shot of the completed outer frame. I've also added foam board insulation to the outside of the outer frame, so we have double wall insulation between the compost chamber and the cold outside world. The final step is to build a sturdy wooden lid that will fit on top of the outer frame. The lid has a lip on it to keep it sitting flush on top of the outer frame. We don't want any cold air blowing in and we don't want a strong wind to blow this lid off. Rather than heavy 2x4 inch lumber, I used 1x3 inch lumber. It's heavy enough to stay in place, but it's light enough that I can easily lift it when I need to get access to the compost pile. Here's the completed lid laid on top of the outer frame. And here's the completed compost-based greenhouse heat system. I've cut a piece of foam board insulation to fit into the lip on the top of the lid. Before taking the system live, I will, I will cover all the components with plastic sheeting to seal any remaining drafts and to protect the unit from the weather. All that's left is to build the compost pile and start heating my greenhouse. I'm waiting for the leaves to finish falling from the trees and to dry out. Stay tuned for the next installment where I'll measure the performance of the system.